the much talked about, long awaited showdown of these two outstanding local boys that are world rated. May 24, 1974. A crowd of 16,000 packs the Los Angeles Sports Arena to root for two local featherweight sensations 21 year old Danny Little Red Lopez versus 22 year old schoolboy Bobby Chacon. The former sparring partners had once been on the same amateur team, even sharing a bed on a road trip. At stake this night, bragging rights and a world title shot. Bobby, how much buzz was in the air? How much excitement around the fight? It was the, the biggest fight? thing around. Yeah? Yes. OK, shake hands. Good luck to both of you. Crowd that has paid more than $220,000 here tonight. I was very confident. I felt good about the fight. Chacon's game plan to box has now gone out the window. He's going to slug with Lopez. Me, I was trying to get in there and try to land my shot. But I don't think they ever heard him. And he turns Lopez around with a right hand. After the eighth round, Chacon's corner told him to close the show. Chacon punches Lopez. He is going this time. Thomas watching it. He is about ready to stop the fight. He is stopping the fight. Bobby Chacon, the winner by knockout. You felt like king of the world. I was. The newly crowned king of L.A. now sought the world title. We're hoping that this fight, will, I can win the championship and uh, I three or four defenses, maybe I have enough money where I can put them into wise investments and I'll be out of the game just like that without the bruises and things that go with boxing. Predictably, the dynamic Chacon accomplished the first part of his plan. Bobby Chacon, the WBC featherweight champion of the world. But real life, tragically, almost predictably, got in the way of the rest of his plan. He fought for 16 years. And today he suffers from pugilistic dementia, punch drunkenness. His mind is clearer than his speech. Looking back, there were early signs he could crash at the end of his glorious ride. You know, I was in trouble with the police and with the drugs and all, all that type of thing. I was running out in the streets and where you're most likely to get into trouble. Like at this liquor store, where he made an early impression on owner Mike Majors. Couldn't tell you how many guys I saw Bobby knock out in the parking lot back then. He was just, Bobby was Bobby. He was just a crazy, wild kid. Until Chacon's childhood sweetheart, Valerie Ginn, concerned about his street fighting, steered him into prize fighting. At 19, they married, and he enrolled in college. In a few years, he was the biggest little man in California. Bobby was our local champion. It gave the community a lot of uplifting and showed here, here's a kid out of the barrio that came up and did well. And he was only too happy to share his good fortune with friends like Blinky Rodriguez. He was Bobby Chuck on. We jump in his Morgan, take a ride through town, jump in his Bentley, take a ride through town. Chacon, now with three children, <laughs> bought a horse farm and investment properties. He also had the requisite entourage. People that, you know, uh, like to hang on, that um, like to get high, like to run in the fast lane. Bobby, I remember at times when he was getting ready for a fight, he'd be in partying with his buddies the day before. Was it just too difficult when you're filled with all of that feeling of success? The fun. And, and fun to be a family man and to do that? That's right. You think that your wife came to think she created a little monster? Yes, she did. She did. Yeah? That's exactly what she thought. Carousing and a lackadaisical work ethic led to his downfall, losing the title in just his second defense. Lopez, meanwhile, won the title and defended it successfully seven times. Then, after suffering two beatings, he did something rare for a young, money-making fighter. He quit. You retired at a relatively young age, 27. 27, yeah. In hindsight, was getting out when you did the right thing? Yeah, I think so. Because I, I was 27, which is young, actually. But in boxing, you're, it's a young man's sport. 
Chacon had more talent than Lopez and more fighting left in him. Yet the violent brawls that made him a fan favorite were taking a toll on his wife. She told me to quit. That's it, Bobby, no more. In 1982, the day before a $6,000 tune-up fight, she called her 30-year-old husband at training camp and begged him not to go ahead with the fight. He said he had to. Hours later, she shot herself to death in their home. We all lost something there. We'll, we'll all miss her for a long, long time. Amen. Maybe we'll catch up with her someday. I sure hope so. Though shattered, Chacon went on with the fight anyway. Recall for us that night you fought after she died. Did people try to talk you out of fighting? Was that a way to forget? Did you get into it even more deeply, fighting, because you knew that that would be a way to uh, try to forget that tragedy? It was, yeah, it was the only way. What else can I do? Now I've got to go through with my career because she's gone, and uh, it, this boxing is going to be just like another marriage to me. How long did it take you to get over that? I'm not. Seven months after his wife's suicide, seven years after he blew his title, Chacon won another title in his fourth blood fest with Bazooka Lamone. A year after that, he was stopped in three brutal rounds by the younger, bigger Ray Mancini, but for his biggest purse, $600,000. The punches, however, would last longer than the money. The California Commission said that you were starting to slur your words. Did you realize that something was happening to you? I didn't care. But did you know it was happening? Yeah, I knew I had the problems. You knew you had but the I problems. Oh, I, I didn't care, so what? It's been a, a, a fight to live. It's still a fight to live. Chacon won his last eight fights over five years, all for small money. But he lost bigger fights to addictions, to the law, to new wives turned ex-wives, which wiped out his considerable savings. What happened to that money? About a million dollars in two fights. I lost a million dollars. If you weren't broke, would you have retired? Yes, yes I should have. I wish I, wish I could have when Bell asked me. We could have made it, but I didn't want to. Then in 1991, his first son, Bobby Jr., was killed in a gang-related shooting. Continued battles with substance abuse and his eroding short-term memory left Chacon powerless to fend for himself. The former millionaire wound up on Skid Row collecting recyclable cans to make ends meet. Bobby is not as down and out as people might think. But I mean, living in a, in a flop house, collecting cans, I mean, yeah. that yeah. seems is about as far down as a star could go. I mean, yeah. But for him, it's a clean living. Danny Lopez, now 49, works construction. It allows him to augment modest savings from his boxing career and to live comfortably. He and his wife of 31 years, Bonnie, are grandparents. I have my house through boxing. Most everything I have now is through boxing. You so raised a family. Raised a family. They're all doing well, so happy and proud that I came out with what I did. How could he escape being so lucky? I mean, I had everything I needed, and then I lost it. Were you feeling that you're never going to get up off the street? You give up. You're out of the ball game. I'll give up. The boxing program was created for him. Created by Pastor Ray Ramirez at a Baptist church school in Los Angeles. I wanted the boys to learn how to defend themselves, learn how to fight. I was a fighter myself, so we began the boxing school. Ramirez who had sparred with Chacon as a teenage amateur, found him living on Skid Row and felt he had to do something to restore the dignity of his one-time hero. He has some kind of damage, but there's a sense of humor still. Yes, he does. <laughs> I do? Yes. <laughs> I forget. Uh, <laughs> and you know uh, what I forgot? 
What? I forgot. <laughs> forgot what you forgot. <laughs> Chacon hasn't forgotten Danny Lopez. Recently, he went to the World Boxing Hall of Fame banquet in L.A., hoping to see him. The evening allowed fans to remember the courage of old favorites. No, you're a tough guy, man. You didn't quit. You didn't quit. I pity the fool. All right, did we get it? Yay! And for two old friends and old foes to come together. In the long run, did you win the fight? No, I don't think so. The, the actual fight, Bobby kicked my butt good. <laughs> but uh, I, I just feel I've been blessed with what I've come out with, with boxing. You go back a long way, no? Oh, wow. I wish Bobby turned out similar. Mm.